Welcome back, friends. I am with yet another awesome member of the Durham community, D. Shea Jordan. He owns Jordan Racing Development. Development. Yes. And tell me, what is that? I am a automotive technician. I specialize in Toyotas and Lexus, but I work on all makes and models. Specializing in really performance-oriented things, um, engine swaps, custom wiring harnesses, mainly 2JZ stuff. So Mark III Supers, Mark IV Supers, older Toyotas, Lexus, uh, RX-7s, Infiniti, G35, 350Zs, pretty much all sports cars from Japan. As you do your work, what is one myth that you can bust today? A lot of people think that when you do a diagnostic, you plug your computer up, they think that the computer tells you what's wrong with the car, but that is not the case. It will give you a generic readout of what's wrong with the car, but then you have to go into those individual systems and perform a thorough diagnostic to figure out what exactly is wrong with the car. Because the generic printout or the generic readout for the code is just a general idea of what's wrong with the car, but you have to go in and confirm what's actually wrong with the car when you're diagnosing a vehicle for whatever issue you have so you would go down that flow chart and figure out where your problem is it wouldn't just be the first thing you said you have to go through all of the steps to figure wow. it out okay if i say a crank sensor you might think that it has something to do to cranking the car of course so somebody might say what's a crank sensor is it got something to do with me cranking Kinda, sorta, but not really. Uh, the crank sensor is gonna be the crankshaft position sensor. The crankshaft position sensor monitors the crankshaft, and as it rotates, that's how it times the engine, along with a couple of other sensors called camshaft position sensors. If you have like a no-start issue, first thing we're gonna check is uh, air, fuel, and ignition. If you have all three of those, and you come to realize you don't have any engine speed readout from the computer, your first thing you're going to do is go and test the uh, crank sensor. So that's one thing. Another thing, we're doing AC work, we will say do evac and recharge. And if we're telling a customer we're going to do evac and recharge on the system, well what is the evac and recharge? It is the evacuation of the AC refrigerant, recovery of it, and a recharge is basically just charging the system back up to the proper levels. Try to use name brand gas, BP, Exxon, or Shell. Don't just stop anywhere and get gas, even if the price is right. Stick to the three known name brands. I prefer touchless car wash, that way you don't have to worry about any foreign objects being in the brushes and then scratching your paint. Because, you know, if a car, say a uh, pickup truck's been off road, so it's gonna have a lot of mud, dirt, and debris on it, and it goes through there, if the brushes touch it, it's gonna pick that up. And then say you come through with your car, you got a nice car, nice paint job, and you drive through right behind that truck, all of that debris is gonna be in the bristles and the brushes and stuff, so it's gonna put it right back on your car. Well, scratch your car with it. Well, the manufacturer has what they call a service schedule, and that is based on mileage. Pretty much nothing's really gonna happen out of the ordinary unless the car is kind of abused. As long as you stick to the uh, service schedule, you don't really have to worry about anything happening to the car. What you would do is bring it in, and then we just always check over stuff. We check everything, we do visual inspections. Um, it's, you know, like how CarMax says they do a multi-point inspection before they buy a car from someone. So we kind of do the same thing. So if I'm thinking about buying a car, uh -huh. should I bring it here and let you check it? Yes, that will be called a pre-purchase inspection. So you would bring well, it here, fancy name, and I would do a yep. I'll do a check on it, see, make sure nothing's leaking, make sure everything is as it says it's supposed to be, you know, stuff like that. So if anybody out there is thinking about buying a car and yep. you find what you think you want, yep, do they need to make an appointment with you, or can they just drive up? Yes, I I do have walk-ins, but they always lead to an appointment because I'm by appointment only. How long have you been in Durham, and what do you like about Durham? I've been in Durham all my life. I was born in Durham. I went to school in Durham, and I went to Durham Tech, all my technology. So as far as what I like about Durham, it's kind of like a city, but it's not a city. People from the city tell me that 
Durham is faster as far as places around here. I have lived other places that I can say Durham, I feel like it's better. Well, I think it's pretty awesome too. We've got some great people, yep. such as yourself. Thank you. Being successful in your business and helping the people stay safely on the road. I appreciate that. Any parting words that you have for our listeners? Keep up with your service schedule on your vehicle. Number one. Number one. That's a great takeaway. Yep. So tell us how they can get in touch with you and where they can find you. You can Google Jordan's Racing Development. My reviews will pop up, Instagram will pop up, uh, Facebook. I'm on pretty much every platform except for Twitter. Well, we'll have that in with video when okay. we post this. And it's been great visiting with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, people, for being with us today. This is Dia Irby, your favorite realtor, by your side all the way. Till later. Bye. Goodbye.